All right, so this is the Creality Sonic Pad that runs on Clipper software, which really enhances the printing on a 3D printer. So this is the box that it comes in. There's a nice little picture here of what the pad looks like. It is quite thin box. And on the back, we can see it just says Creality and Clipper, and that's about it. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right, and this is what we see inside. Quality certified, and we can see the Sonic Pad here, so it is quite large. Let's go ahead and pull it out. Also, pretty thick. So yeah, quite large, and we have a very nice size screen. There's a protector over it, I'm gonna leave it for now. It is all plastic. On the sides, we got two USB ports here. On the other side, we got a couple light indicators and a power button, looks like. Nothing too much on the bottom. We got a little foot here that's rubber and not much on the top either. Now, if we go to the back, there's quite a bit more here. We got the Creality logo there, some information here. We got a couple more USB ports here, a lane port that connects straight to your internet with like an ethernet cable and also a sensor plug. Also, we got two little holes here for something. It doesn't say what. And then going down here, we got this nice design pattern. And also, you guys can see that's a speaker right here. Now, we also have some pretty cool little feet that come out or legs that you can set it down and it'll stand. Definitely pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and see what else is in the box. So we got a manual underneath that and it is quite thick and goes over of how to hook this thing up and get started. We do have a couple boxes here that have, looks like all of our cables. So we get a micro USB to USB. Looks like an extension cable to our sensor. Some adapters to the wall plug, which I guess this is kind of a universal kit here. Got a USB thumb drive, a little adapter from micro USB to whatever that is. And also another adapter from micro USB to USB-C. And the last piece here appears to be the sensor or the G sensor, which I think we install onto the printer to capture the G force data. All right, so let's see what's in this other one. The power adapter with a couple more adapters. Looks like here we have the US type. Let's go ahead and click it on there. There we go. It seems to have a pretty decent length cord of about four feet. And that is everything that's in the box. All right, so in the manual, starting with first use, they kind of tell you what to do in steps. So we're gonna plug the power in the pad, and then we're gonna to need to connect our pad to the printer. And then there's a bunch of other steps here of how to get it all going. So let's go ahead and move some of this stuff out of the way, and we'll bring in our Ender 3 version 2. And this is actually the Neo edition, which is Creality's latest printer. But if you have the regular version 2, it should work just fine with this. So on the Sonic pad, let's go ahead and connect our power. And we'll also grab our interface cable and I'm gonna hook it up to the top one because the bottom one actually says cam. So I think that's for like a camera option. So on the Ender 3 version two, we actually have a micro USB plug and we should be able to plug it in quite simply. Now, if you have any other kind, you have the adapters so you can use those. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So after that, we need to power on the Sonic pad, which the power button's on this side here. So let's click it. Oh, there's a little light here. Couple lights. Oh wow, and that actually powers on our printer too. So I don't have the power on on the printer and it went ahead and booted this thing up. So somehow the screens interact between the two systems. All right, so looks like we've got to the next menu. Hopefully you guys can see that, zoomed you in a bit. Actually, let's go ahead and take this protector off and maybe we can see better. But yeah, the screen is very nice and crisp. So very good resolution there. So for the next part, it's asking our language. So it's English and you got I guess only two to choose from. And it does make a little sound when I click on it. So let's click next step. So we gotta agree to the privacy policy. Choose a region. Uh, quite a lot of stuff to choose from here. I don't know, I'm just gonna pick that one else. Next. Okay, so now it's asking us to log in into the Wi-Fi. So this is optional. If you wanna do this, you'll have a lot more options. But we're gonna keep it pretty basic today and just get it going. So let's skip. It's asking us to name the patent. And now we need to choose our printer. So even though we have the Neo, which is practically the same thing, and you guys can see we have quite a few V2s here. And at the end here, you guys can see we have other models. So I'm not gonna click on that right now, but supposedly you can integrate this thing with any 3D printer. But if you do have an Ender 3 version two, this should be very easy for you. Or any of these more fancy printers like the S1 Pro and the S1. So let's go with Ender 3 version two with the CR Touch because that's what we have. Click next. 
So now it wants us to insert this thumb drive that it came with into the bottom port here on the side. So now we're gonna click on flash firmware. Okay, so now it wants us to unplug it and plug it into the printer. And we obviously can't do that because we used this thumb drive. So I think what we should have done, so let's go back, is unplug this thing because it's actually asking us to plug in the, the 3D printer micro SD card into here, which we have right here. And every Creality printer comes with the adapter. So we just need to plug it into that, the card itself. And then we can plug it into the Sonic pad and flash the firmware on that. All right, so simple as that, should be written on there. So now we're gonna unplug it, take the micro SD card back out and plug it into the printer. And now I'm gonna hit the power button on the printer itself and it powers up. So let's click next here. Okay, so I guess we should have clicked this and then powered it on, but no problem. So we are connected with the cable. Firmware has been successfully flashed, but for some reason we're getting some kind of error also here. It says to reset the firmware. So I'm not sure if we did that right or not, but let's try to restart. All right guys, so I had to go a few times and I accidentally went back, so I have to <laughs> do it again. And actually the key is to have this unplugged. I'm gonna use that as a dummy because it already has the firmware on the micro SD card, so. And now we're gonna plug this in. We'll wait a few seconds. And there it goes. So you kind of have to give it a little time. That's what I noticed, if you're too quick with it, it doesn't have enough time to process whatever it's doing between the two systems and you end up getting errors and stuff. So yeah, it's not as flawless as I would like it, but it does connect eventually. It's just a little bit of back and forth. But yeah, for me, it took a few tries to get it to work as the instructions in here and in the pad were kind of contradicting with when to plug in the cord for the communication. So in any case, so we're gonna do some self checks looks like. Let's click start. So it says that the hot end fan should be spinning. It is. Let's go to the next step. All right, now it is running. Okay, now our parts cooling fan, and I heard it turned on here, and it is working. So that's good. Next step. Okay, now it looks like it's going to do homing. Let me zoom you guys out here a bit. All right, so it did home. So far, so good. Next step. It says uh, probe calibration. Okay, so it wants to set the Z-axis offset. And I'm just gonna use a posty note. All right, so it's still setting up, looks like. So we're way too high and we need to go down quite a bit. So here we can choose how much down we can go. So I'm gonna go one millimeter at a time. Actually, let's go half a millimeter. So we're setting the gap between the nozzle and the bed. But what's interesting is our bed's not even heated. So, all right, here we go. We're really close. Let's go to 0 0.01. Okay, that's too tight. We'll go up just a little bit. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it a little looser than tighter since we're not even heated. All right, so I guess we're good there. Next step. Okay, so now it wants to do out of bed leveling and it's actually gonna do 25 points. Wow, that's definitely more than the stock firmware, which does 16. So let's click on temperature setup here. And yeah, okay, yeah, we can preheat the bed right here. So let's just preheat it to 60. Okay, so it's saying it's preheating. Very nice pad. I, I love the quality of how everything's laid out and the resolution is just really clean and crisp. All right, so we're finally at 60 and we can go ahead and start our calibration. So it's gonna go 25 times and probe the bed. All right, so it looks like we're all set up there and our tolerances are very small, so it doesn't have to adjust much. And we get some kind of mesh here of what our bed looks like in 3D. So I guess we are good to go. So let's click next step. And it says, congratulations, the printer is in perfect condition. So let's start your printing journey. Very interesting. Start your experience. All right, and it looks like that's our home menu there. So we got some kind of graph down here. And if you guys notice there in the background, our original screen is just staying lit up with the Creality logo. All right, so let's take a closer look at the screen here and everything that's on it. So on the top, we can see our nozzle temperature, our bed temperature. We got the Ender 3 version two with out of bed leveling. Here we have that graph and it looks like it's representing the hot end and the bed temperature. We got a big stop button here and it looks like that just stops everything. Okay, it looks like it completely disconnects from the printer also, wow. Over here, we have the main buttons. So we got move. And that's gonna move all of the axes. We can home it, the usual stuff that you find in move. Let's go back. We got preheating. So we're gonna click on these buttons here to preheat 
PLA or PTG. So PTG is 250 and 80 on the bed and PLA is 260 on the bed. So, and you can adjust the parameters here. And you guys can see how our graph changes there as the nozzles start preheating and the bed. Control, we can control our extruder from here. The fan, temperature, just kind of redundant there and motor off. And we got configure, manual bed leveling, out of bed leveling, Z probe calibration, network settings, local information. What is that? Okay, so that's everything about the uh, printer or I guess the screen and the printer is connected to. We also have camera here, which you can install a USB camera to this thing and have a live view. Other settings, so screen brightness, break screen, so you can make it where it goes dim after a certain amount of time. So here it's set at five minutes. You could also set it to never if you never want it to turn off. And then we got more settings here. Oh, we actually have some themes. Oh, well, there's only one theme. All right, so yeah, quite a few things here that you can mess with. We even have advanced options. So yeah, definitely goes quite detailed of everything here. We're gonna keep it simple for this video. And obviously, you know, you can connect this thing to the internet and be able to access the printer from anywhere remotely and things like that. So yeah, this Sonic pad here is quite capable for more advanced and demanding features. So yeah, for the last button here, we got print. And if we click that, we can read here different types of places. So we got local, nothing for some reason there. And then USB, reality cloud, and print history. So if we click on USB, there's nothing there because we need to plug it in. So let's go ahead and plug this thumb drive that came with the pad. And if we click on it now, we can see that there's something on there is because I threw a file in there, which is a Benchy to get started with. So it didn't come with anything, unfortunately, but I think if you connect it to your network, you can access the cloud and maybe pull some stuff from there. So, all right, so let's go ahead and start it. And this is what we see. And I got some filament purged already. So we do have some information here about the print. Apparently no preview, which is interesting because I did use Creality Slicer. So if everything looks good, we're gonna click on print and it's gonna start it. And we're purging. And our offset does appear to be perfect, so that's good. So as it's printing, let's go ahead and look at the screen and see what kind of options we have there. All right, so this is what we see while we're printing. We got the preview here that's not previewing anything. The percentage circle, which is at 5%. File name, the nozzle temperature and the target, the bed temperature and the target, the X, Y, and Z coordinates, the speed, the flow, the fan. Since we started printing, six minutes and seven seconds. Remaining time is one hour and 18 minutes. So yeah, that's actually pretty quick for a benchy. And a number of layers, 240 and we're on 13. And on the bottom we got pause, adjust, and configure. So if we click that, it's gonna pause or stop, adjust. Here we get another menu with Z step adjustments, which you can do it on the fly here, up or down. The speed, plus and minus. The flow rate, plus and minus. And then we got temperature and fan. And down here we got increments or units. So if we go back, we got configure, and these look like the more normal settings that you have during the main menu. So yeah, I don't think you can really do much here while you're printing. So yeah, pretty good options here and a lot of useful information and very nicely laid out. It only took us a couple minutes to look at the screen and look how much the Benji already printed. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. That's really, really quick. Curious of how the uh, quality is gonna come out. But looking at it, I can tell it's not perfect. But it is going really, really quick, which is the whole point of this thing. All right, so we finished our first print and I actually printed another one in black. So maybe we could see a little better, but yeah, that was definitely a pretty quick print. The reason it probably looks the way it does. So yeah, overall, not bad but one of the sides here had a pretty severe defect, maybe just not at heating correctly or what, and kind of see there. Yeah, I would say, you know, pretty rough looking, even for the time that it printed it in, but definitely not horrible, which is quite interesting. Now this black one is exactly the same, but interestingly enough, it actually turned out a little better. So we do have a lot of vibrations and ghosting, 
But other than that, this one definitely looks much better. A lot more promising for the clipper printing with the Sonic Pad. I did slice this in Creality software for the Sonic Pad. And to be honest, I expected a little better results. But I think we're missing a very key feature here, which is our G sensor that we need to install somewhere on the hot end and then calibrate it so all the vibrations and ghosting can hopefully be accounted for. And so installing the sensor is not too hard. Let's grab the cable we need, plug it in the back in the sensor plug. The harder part would be to install the sensor itself to the hot end. Move these. And they do include a bracket that you can print, which mounts on here, but you do need longer bolts. And the way you have to mount it is in the coordinates of X and Y. So it has to be like this in order for it to register the axes correctly. Now what I'm gonna do, instead of printing out a bracket, is I'm just gonna release one of these bolts from the CR Touch. And then I'm gonna grab the sensor and install it on the top here. And I do have a little bolt which is a three millimeter. It's longer than the one that installs there, which we can mount it straight to the frame. And it'll be very rigid, so it's not going anywhere. And so now all we gotta do is plug in the other side into the sensor, and just like that. And now we are ready to do our calibration. So hopefully you guys can see that, but we're gonna click on configure, then other settings, and then go down to advanced options. And then from there, a little bit down to measuring resonance. So we'll click that and it'll take us step by step here. Pick this up so you guys can see maybe a little better, but yeah, it's asking us to install the sensor for the X and Y. Let's go to next. Okay, so it says that it sees the sensor. Start the test. So it is gonna home. All right, there it goes. So now it's going side to side. So it's starting with like slower oscillations and going to really quick. So it's really vibrating and you don't want to touch the printer at all right now. So I can definitely hear it doing something. It must be vibrating at very high pitch. It's actually some vibrations coming out from the head itself. You guys can probably hear that. So it's doing the X right now and I'm wondering if it's going to do the Y as it's going to do the same thing to the bed. That'll be pretty interesting. Oh yeah, there it goes. So it is actually now moving the bed back and forth. So you guys probably can't see it very well, but yeah, it's shaking the bed now. Oh wow, it's vibrating pretty abruptly. But yeah, if you had like the glass, this would probably be a lot more effective as the glass is quite heavy. But with this kind of bed, it's quite lightweight, so yeah, but still very, very interesting how it measures all that frequency. All right, so that looks like that is complete. All right, so let's click on OK here. It says that it will save the data. We'll confirm that. And looks like it's gonna restart. And there we go. Now we got our new parameters into the Sonic Pad. Now let's compare it to the latest one, which is the sensor being connected to the pad while printing. So this is the new one, and you guys can see, well, maybe you can see, there's quite a bit of difference. It's not a huge difference, but there is a difference. So if you look right here, you can see there's quite a bit of ringing there. And on the new one, it's almost gone. So it definitely gets rid of the ringing. Another place we can tell is on the back here. So this is the resonance feature at work. And this one here is the original one. You can see those lines. So yeah, it definitely gets rid of the lines there very well. But yeah, if I would have to say, it's a very substantial improvement over not using a G-Sensor on the print head. 